The Economic Community of West African State, ECOWA, says it will need over $2 billion annually to activate and operate a regional standby force to combat terrorism in the region. President of the ECOWAS Commission, Umatura, says it's collective responsibility of all 15 member states to fight against terrorism, saying the inclusion of all member states, even those currently suspended, was crucial for effective counter-terrorism efforts. He spoke at the opening section of a meeting of ECOWAS Ministers of Finance and Defense in Abuja on Thursday convened to discuss the establishment of a regional force to combat terrorism and unconstitutional government changes. The meeting followed directives from the ECOWAS Authority of the Heads of State and Government urging swift action to mobilize resources for their critical initiatives. Now, Nigeria's Minister of Defense, Mohamed Abubakar, also emphasized the critical financial implications involved in activating the standby force. All 15 ECOWAS member states have been invited to take part in this important meeting. And the reason is certainly the authorization and the approval given to the Commission's proposal to this effect sometime in the past. It is believed that we cannot fight terrorism alone or while others are not participating. That is why the Commission proposed to the authority through, of course, the Council of Ministers, that although countries might be under suspension, they should be allowed to take part in meetings relating to security as well as in sectoral meetings. Our gathering here today is driven by the urgent need to consider the financing options in the memorandum to be presented by the ECOWAS Commission for deploying the proposed regional force. The financial implications of those proposals are significant. The overall estimation cost is two billion six hundred and six nine hundred uh, 606, 695,640 dollars per year for a brigade of 500 men. The alternative proposal is for a brigade of 1,650 men with an estimate annual cost of 481,495,459,865 dollars. Those figures underscore the gravity of the tax before us and the necessity of a robust and sustainable resource mobilization strategy. It is therefore imperative that we critically review the options considering the current challenges confronting our region and the financial constraints facing our various member states. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as we embark on those deliberations, I urge each of us to contribute robustly with a view to providing actionable recommendations in order to address those challenges.